Uh, well, thank you for uh, providing me an opportunity to give an update regarding uh, the situation with the incident in Crystal Brook and the, the progress of uh, uh, Ian and Jordan. I can say uh, that uh, Jordan has been discharged from hospital and is now uh, recovering with family. And Ian is obviously still in the, the Royal Adelaide Hospital. Uh, as I have said earlier this morning, um, he was in surgery for several hours last night. Um, the outcome of that surgery is quite positive um, and he has, he has continued to show signs of progress, positive progress uh, throughout the day. Uh, he still has some way to go though. Uh, his family are very grateful for the support, as is uh, Jordan's, and uh, I would just like to acknowledge the, uh, the wishes and accolades that have come from the Port Pirie community and the Crystal Brook community, which is quite, quite touching to the family's concern. Uh, I can also advise that uh, we have appointed a uh, Detective Superintendent uh, to head up the Commissioner's Inquiry and the investigation by Major Crime Investigation Branch is continuing. Detectives uh, and Forensics Officers from Major Crime uh, were at the scene in Crystal Brook again today. However, they're at the point now where that scene is being closed down, the street is being reopened and they'll continue their investigations from back in Adelaide. Once again, I'd just like to acknowledge the uh, tremendous community support we've had, um, so many well wishes from so many parts of the community. And I'd also like to particularly thank once again, um, the resident in Simmons Street that came to the assistance of the police officer. I would like to particularly thank uh, the paramedic and the doctor who attended to provide critical support to Ian uh, when he was uh, uh, severely at risk of losing his life and also to the MedStar team who conveyed him and those terrific people in the Royal Adelaide Hospital who have worked so hard to stabilise him and ensure he has the best chance of a full recovery. Um, I'm happy to take questions. These were two obviously very well respected officers. Do you have some more details about some of the accolades that most of them had to their names? Were there any awards or any sort of history of uh, I, I would imagine that we'll provide further information about the background of these officers in due course, but at this point in time, most of our focus has been uh, towards making sure they're properly supported. Um, yeah, there, there will be a time for that and we'll, we'll happily provide that information. But we'd also like to work with both Ian and Jordan in relation to that sort of personal information we provide. Um, as, as much as uh, everyone is aware of the identity of the two police officers, particularly within the, uh, the, the Mid-North community, um, we'll certainly work with them to make sure that uh, we, we consider their position as we, we move forward from this point. Commissioner, that trip to the hospital last night would have been harrowing for yourself. What goes through your head as you make that trip? Um, well, I was um, in a position where I was travelling back from Crystal Brook to Port Pirie. So uh, both Ian and Jordan had had some time in hospital. Um, <laughs> it's uh, the, the main purpose for my visiting there. Well, I was fortunate enough to be able to speak to Jordan. Um, he was stable and uh, had been moved to a ward from the emergency department and he was in generally good spirits. Um, and I was also able to meet his immediate family. And I spent some time with Ian's family and obviously Ian uh, uh, was still in critical care at that point in time. Um, from my point of view, it's important that both of these officers and their families understand that uh, the whole organisation is thinking about them and that we're there to support them in any way we possibly can. And to make this particular ordeal as, um, as easy as possible to manage. Um, and I'm sure everyone can just picture just how difficult it is not just for the officers involved, but their immediate family members receiving that news that uh, someone you care about has been seriously injured uh, on duty, um, being called to the hospital, um, and many of these family members have travelled from um, the, the mid-north. Uh, we've, we've assisted in that much, as much as we possibly could. This is a very difficult time for families, and then we have a look at the, the broader police family. You know, there are a lot of people who work with these two officers who, who um, have to get on with their job and continue to do the job they do in the community. So um, yeah, I feel privileged to have the opportunity to go in and just to make sure the family understand that we're there to support them as much as possible. And just to clarify, sorry, is Ian's condition still critical? Um, I haven't had a specific update on the status of his condition, but I've been advised that the, the surgery uh, has gone well um, and that he is continuing to make progress to that. Do you expect the dial bow back to Look, it would be my hope that we can help them transition back into their, their normal policing roles, but this is something that we'll work through with each of the individual officers. Um, once again, I'm sure you can imagine uh, dealing with an event like this is not just about recovery from physical injuries, but it's about you know, taking into, um, into account you know, what they've had to do as police officers and the impact that they will have on them going forward. And 
my hope is that we can work with them to restore them to full duties, but we'll do whatever we can to make sure that they come out of this as best as possible. Of course the investigations are only just starting into what happened yesterday, but just in terms of timeline, um, I understand both officers arrived at the house at 10.15, ambulances weren't called until 11.17, do we have any more idea about what happened in that hour that they were at the house? Um, so if I can briefly summarise, without going into too much details, because there are separate investigations running, uh, they arrived at the scene at about 10.15 and they spent some time um, communicating with the occupant uh, before a decision was made to take further steps. Um, there was a period of time when they were calling for assistance and for that assistance to arrive. Um, it, it seems to go pretty quickly when you look at it um, as an incident, but I can understand how people might think you know, what, what actually happened between the time they arrived and when uh, assistance was on, on site. But, uh, uh, given it's a small community, uh, 29 kilometres away from Port Pirie, um, I think it's understandable that there were some of those delays and uh, I think we can all be grateful for the fact that there was a paramedic in, in close proximity so when that call went out they were there as quickly as possible. So there had been some time when they were attempting to speak to the yes. officers? Yeah. Is there I, any chance that this could have been preventable? Um, we've been told that they may have known the history of his mental health. Uh, more crews have been sent? Um, that's the purpose of both the coronial investigation and the Commissioner's inquiry, is to look at all of the circumstances um, re relating to the incident and the people involved. So I won't elaborate on that. Um, and I, I appreciate people's desire to understand exactly what's happened, but there is a process we must follow to make sure that when we release that information, uh, we are confident that it is factual and accurate and properly uh, depicts exactly what occurred. Are you able to confirm the alleged perpetrator's name that's been widely reported today in the media? Uh, the name that's been circulated is the person that's been identified. That has been confirmed. Is it clear yet which officer made that shot on that perpetrator? Once again, um, that's the type of information that will be fully explored during the investigation, and I don't intend to interfere with that investigation process. <coughs> um, there will be a point in time when we can disclose more details about exactly what transpired um, once that confrontation occurred. Just, just to change, so just one last question, just on the house in Port Augusta, um, there was just come to light a uh, unregistered doctor working for at least one week, at least 15 patients. Um, do we know what kind of charges or penalties that individual might be looking at here? And that's currently under investigation. I have been briefed on that. Um, there is a role in this situation for uh, SA Health and APRA, and we're examining whether any offences have been committed and how it will will proceed with any offences that may be identified. So I don't have any further information at this time. With regards to Mr Ferris, um, it appears that he was making his own weapons. Was this concerning? Once again, um, I won't elaborate on any matters relating to the, uh, the person involved or, or more detail regarding the circumstances around the incident. Um, we do need to let the investigation take its course and uh, I don't think it serves any purpose for me to speculate or to provide small pieces of information in the absence of other uh, elements that might provide context. Thanks, Thanks guys.